From the outset, we knew that we wanted story to be one of the big pillars for the Force Unleashed franchise. It really heightens that sense of immersion. It gives you a character that you can relate to, it puts you into the story, and we wanted to tie into the overall saga as well. What made the first film so successful wasn't just the special effects or the fantastic setting, it really was the fact that that was the wrapper around a really compelling mythic story. Vader is luring you back to him. Yes, I know! When The Force Unleashed released, we were very excited that the story uh, got accolades and awards, and we really took that seriously and evolved the story for The Force Unleashed too. The fact that George allowed us to fill the gap between episode three and four gave us not only a challenge, but also a responsibility to the fans. So the story that fits between episode three and four has to make sense. It is a time period that hasn't been very well defined in the past. Darth Vader is hunting down the last of the Jedi. The Rebel Alliance is really fledgling and the Empire is really locking down control of the whole galaxy. Force Unleashed One ended where Secret Apprentice saved the Rebellion by sacrificing himself. And we thought that was a great place to take off. The big question now has become, how did that happen? The story for The Force Unleashed Two really evolved. Uh, it became a lot darker, uh, a lot grittier. And, and most importantly to me, uh, a lot more personal. And we decided to, to allow the apprentice to grow up and to become much more self-aware. And he went from being secret apprentice to somebody that we actually call a name, Starkiller. He's actually a person. And he introspectively is trying to figure out why he keeps doing what he's told and, uh, and actually decides that maybe he shouldn't be doing what he's told. He should actually go out there and pursue his own identity and figure out who he is. Because we start Starkiller off as allegedly a clone, um, and a clone who's going insane, immediately we already have a little darker tone to the story as well. So you're not really sure where he's gonna end up, whether or not he's a clone, whether or not he's going insane. We've really focused on making him a little bit less about the big galactic struggle and more about this character and what his motivations are and what he's going through. You will return to me and give yourself to the dark side. Every time we do a Star Wars game, we're always trying to expand the Star Wars universe. So Force Unleashed is, is a great franchise because for fans of Star Wars, you're able to play it and, and see things that are familiar to you. You're able to see Darth Vader and learn more about him. You're able to, to see Princess Leia and what she's doing during this time period and see the formation of the Rebel Alliance and, and how the galaxy is evolving. But because we're always expanding everything and adding new things, you also get to encounter new characters. So Starkiller has evolved and become you know, a, a hero in his own right. We wanted to continue the story of Starkiller, Darth Vader, Juno Eclipse, and General Coda. But Force Unleashed 2, Boba Fett and Yoda play really key pivotal roles that are instantly recognizable to fans and make the story stronger. What's really cool about that is that it resonates to some of the things that you might remember for The Empire Strikes Back, where, for example, Luke was trying to figure out uh, his self-identity, and, and he goes to Dagobah and meets the, meets the incredible Yoda. I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. <laughs> and goes to the Cave of Evil and uses that experience to get to the other side much more aware, at least much more aware about what his next direction needs to be. We did something very similar for The Force Unleashed too, where uh, Starkiller, in, in the hunt of his, for his identity, um, ends up in Dagobah. He, uh, of course, comes across Jedi Master Yoda. However, he, he doesn't know who Yoda is. Yoda is, is just this kind of creature that he discovers guarding what we call the Cave of Evil, this uh, place of, of, of immense power on, on Dagobah, where Luke Skywalker had his vision of Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back. Something lost, a part of yourself. Perhaps. Yoda kind of helps Starkiller figure out the next steps in his journey, really encourages him to go into the Cave of Evil and have a vision of his own in order to continue on his journey and, and figure out where Juno Eclipse might be. Early in the story process, one of the designers suggested, well, what if Boba Fett tried to spear Juno Eclipse away? We know from a lot of the expanded universe that Boba Fett has been working for the Empire, and it made sense that Vader would hire somebody like Boba Fett to help him track down Starkiller. Boba Fett plays a key part in making sure that somehow Darth Vader gets to find Starkiller again. One of our mantras has been familiar but new. 
We really want to put elements into the game that feel familiar, but put a new spin on them or introduce things in a new way. I think that as a very young medium, we really haven't scratched the surface in terms of the types of stories we can tell and how different those stories can be from things like film or novels, and that's really exciting too. So I'm, I'm really glad that we're constantly focused on telling new stories and finding new ways to tell those stories too.